of the circus. for Jerry of the circus. Well, the tents are all up and ready for another day's work, Ray. <coughs> you know, I never get tired of watching them set up. It sure is interesting. <coughs> hmm? Now, Washington, who do you see? <coughs> oh, I see. It's Olsen. Hi, Olsen. Oh, hello, Jerry. <coughs> Rags, come back here. Don't bother Olsen. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. He's no bother, Jerry. I'm just about all finished taking care of the bulls for this day anyway. Hiya, fella. <laughs> glad, to, glad to see me, ain't you? You got a late start this morning, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're a little late getting over onto the lot, but you notice we're ready on time. I just can't figure out how you do it so fast. <laughs> getting the circus ready for a show is just like building a big city. You do it in a couple of hours. Yeah, almost like magic, ain't it, Jerry? Yeah? Sure is. <laughs> Well, I'm uh, heading for the mess talk to take on a little more coffee. Do you want to come along? No, I think I'll go over and see Mr. Randall. Huh? I want to find out if they picked up that counterfeiter yet. Oh, you mean that uh, feller with the funny name that was uh, hooked up with Velko, the strong man? Huh? Yeah. What was his name again? I heard it, but it was too odd for me to remember. Tonetti. Slippery Tonetti. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's it, that's it. Why, I heard somebody say... Let's see, who was it now? Oh, well, it don't matter, but... Someone said that Mr. Randall got a phone call from that uh, detective that was traveling with us. You mean Mr. Hadley? Yeah, yeah. He told Mr. Randall all about how they captured this uh, Tonetti fellow. He did? Uh-huh. Hey, I'm going to get right over to the office wagon and find out about it. <laughs> Still playing detective, huh, Jerry? Well, I'm especially interested in this case. You are, huh? <laughs> See you later. Come on, Rags. Rags. All right, so long, Jerry. Here, Rags, over this way. Come on. Yeah. Mr. Randall, it's me, Jerry. Oh, come in, Jerry. Come in. Ah, hey, you're all excited, aren't you? And poor Rags is even panting. Well, I ran all the way over here the minute I heard. Uh, heard what, Jerry? Well, Olson just said you got a phone call from Mr. Hadley. Oh, that? Uh, yes, yes, I did. Well, uh, I wanted to hear all about it. All right, sit down, Jerry. Okay, lay down there, Rags. <laughs> poor Rags is puffing like a steam engine. Oh, he'll get his breath in a minute. Uh, tell me, <laughs> did they get to Nettie? Yes, sir. Picked him up at the post office in Silver Springs when he called for that package of counterfeit money. And what else? Well, Jerry, it seems they questioned Belko quite a bit and got him to talk. I didn't think he'd be hard to handle. Well, what did he say? Did he tell the truth, and did he say that Spike didn't have anything to do with him or Tonetti? Well, uh, you know, of course, that uh, Mr. Hadley thinks that Spike was mixed up with him. Yeah, I know he does, but I don't. Mm-hmm. Well... Uh... Well, uh, tell me uh, what Belko said. Well, I guess I'll have to break down and admit that uh, you were right again. What do you mean? Although I was inclined to agree with you right along. Yeah. Well, Belko admitted that he planted that counterfeit money in Spike's mattress. He did? Uh Uh-huh. And he also admitted giving Spike a bad $10 bill for the work he did on his trunk. That's the bill he spent for the new clothes he got. Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine anyone being so mean as to do a thing like that? Well, there's all sorts of people in this world, Jerry. Yeah, I guess so, but... Now Spike will go free, won't he? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, Hadley tells me he should be free of all charges in a few days. You think he'll join up with the circus again? Well, I told Hadley to tell him that he could go right back to work for me. Oh, that's keen. <laughs> I, I should think he'd stay away from the circus, though. Why? Well, <laughs> it's sort of a jinx for him. A jinx? <laughs> yeah. Seems, seems like it's bad luck for Spike. This is the second time he's been picked up by the police since he's been with the circus. I guess that's right. 
Oh, but I think he'll be back. Well, let's hope so. And uh, let's hope he doesn't get into any more trouble. Oh, it wasn't his fault. No, no, it wasn't. Uh, just his tough luck. I sure feel good now. Lucky I spotted Tanetti with Belko the other night, wasn't <laughs> well, it? You bet it was. <laughs> yeah, for all concerned. <laughs> well, I guess that's all there is to talk about, so maybe I'd better get over to the horse stop and see if I can help Whitey. Uh. Yes, yes, yes. It is Nicholas Russoff, Mr. Randall. Oh, uh, come in, Nick. Stop it, Rags. Hello, Nicholas. Uh, good morning, Nick. Good morning, morning. Mr. Randall. Jerry. Good morning. Well, uh, what's on your mind, Nick? Well, uh, Mr. Randall, you know I do not like for to complain, but uh. my sister Olga, she tell me I have to see you. Yeah, what about? Or uh, should I say, uh, what about this time? Well, it is the horses again, oh. our horses. Oh, yes, yes. Olga say they do not get attention. Uh -huh. Just because we own our own horses, you know, it is in our contract that they should have the best of care. Yes, yes, that's right. Well, uh, what seems to be the trouble? Well, Olga say they do not get enough feed. Our horses do not get as much as the other horses. Oh, but that's not so. Why do you like those Arabian uh. horses of yours and Always give them special uh, attention. Ju just, just a minute, Jerry. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, let me ask you this, Nick. Uh, have you seen any mistreatment of your horses? Well, uh, I don't think so, but my sister Olga, oh, she yes, says that... Oh, yes, 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 I know, Nick. Uh, she takes an awfully keen interest in the Rusov troop, doesn't she? Well, you know, she's the manager of the act. Yes, yes, I know. Well, <clears throat> you tell Olga that uh, I'll have a talk with Whitey and see that your horses get extra care from now on. Oh, thank you, Mr. Randall. I will tell her. Yeah, all right, Nick. Uh, goodbye. Uh, goodbye, Jerry. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye, Nick. I I'm uh. sorry what I said, but, well, I couldn't help it. I, I know for sure Whitey likes their horses and takes good care of them. Well, that's all right, Jerry. I know he does, too, but, uh, well, you just got to humor, Olga. This is nothing new. Uh, she sends one of the brothers over to me every once in a while with some silly little complaint. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, sure. Uh, Olga just wants to show her authority, that's all. So the best thing to do is to say, yes, yes, we'll take care of it, whatever it is. Dad used to call people <laughs> like her troublemakers. Yeah, that, that's just about the right name for Olga. But along with her pettiness, uh, she's shrewd, very shrewd. She's managed the Rusov troop ever since they came to this country, and she's done a fine job of it. She's a very clever woman, and... Well, I, uh, I wouldn't want her for an enemy. Are they very rich? The Russoffs? Yeah. Well, yeah, I'd say they were pretty well off. They've got many thousands of dollars tied up in those horses of theirs. Besides the silver saddles and expensive trappings that they use, yes, I'd call them rich. There's no telling how much money they've saved over the past few years. They're very thrifty, you I know. I kind of thought they were rich. Mm -hmm. They're about the highest paid act of its kind in the world today. But I guess they're worth it. You, you bet they are. They're worth every penny I pay them. They're a big attraction, Jerry, a big attraction. And they're real Russians, too, aren't they? Oh, sure they are. Boris, the oldest brother, was a member of the Tsar's Royal Guard, a high-ranking officer. I heard... Pete, what was that? Oh, yeah. Sounded like a smash about the by the front entrance. Pete, let's go see what happened. Yeah. And, uh, wait till I close this door. Hey, you were right. Pete, look at that truck up on the sidewalk out by the main gate. Well, of all things. And look at that water. Well, I say, that, why, that truck... Why, that truck broke off a fire hydrant. See, this is bad. The whole lot will be flooded the way that water's pouring out of that hydrant. Hey, here, Rags. You stay right by me. Right. Right. Bad, Mr. Rags. Yeah. No way to turn that water off. Uh, Larry, John, uh, get some sandbags and uh, put them on a long sidewalk. That water will get into the main top and we won't have a matinee today. Okay. There must be some way to shut that water off. Uh, how did this happen? Any of you men know? Well, the fellow was uh, driving the truck said he lost control. The first thing he knew is up on the sidewalk. Uh, just our luck he had to break off that fire hydrant. Pretty bad, all right. And that water's coming out uh, one of you men run across the street to that store and call the fire department. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, and call the police department, too. I'm afraid the whole lot will be flooded. Yes. We can't put on a show with the arena track underwater. Oh, say, this is awful, Jerry. Can I do something to help? No, no, no. There's nothing uh, nothing to be done until the fire department gets here. Well, they'll have a way of stopping it, I hope. The water must be pouring out of there about 50 gallons a minute. Yeah, of all things. A broken fire hydrant and right in front of the big top. Couldn't have happened a block away. It seems awful that we just have to stand here and not do anything. Yeah, here come some of the men with sandbags. That should help. Let them over here. Oh, but that won't work, Mr. Randall. The water's pouring out too fast. Uh, yes, I'm afraid you're right, Jerry. Just look at that midway. Two inches of mud on it already. How will the folks get through that to get in to see the show? Well, I'm not so much worried about that as I am about whether or not we'll have a show. I can get boards put down on the midway and make a walk for the customers, but if that water isn't stopped soon, the best we can do this afternoon is put a boat race on under the big top. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Say, it's no laughing matter, Jerry. I know it. I'm sorry, but you said that so funny. Well, right? it's true, Jerry. There'll be a lake in there in a few more minutes. Hey, listen. Uh, what, uh, what is it, Jerry? Can't you hear him? Hear who? The fire department. Hey, listen. 
Oh, good. Oh, say, well, I'm afraid they're too late. An awful lot of water got into that lot and under that big pop. Hey, look at him come. He sure doesn't take them off. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I hope so. Oh, hey, Jim, what are you doing? Yeah, look, they're opening that iron cover across the street. Yeah, huh? That's where they turn the water off. Yeah. Yeah, that, that slows it down all right. Yeah, that's it, all right. There, it, it's all fixed. Didn't take them long once they got here. Yeah. Here comes the chief, Jerry. I, I want to talk with him. Uh, chief! Uh, chief! Yes, sir. Did you call me? Yes, chief. I, I'm the owner of this water-soaked circus here. Oh, Mr. Randall. It's too bad. Sure flooded your lot. Yeah. One of those unfortunate things that can't be helped. Yeah, I, w- I was just going to ask you if there isn't some way we can get that surface water off the ground, especially in the main tent. Yes, I think we can help you out all right, Mr. Randall. We get through, you might get a load or two of sand and spread it around before you put the sawdust down. Yeah, uh, what do you have in mind to do? Well, we'll get some pumps working and pump out the best part of the water. Of course, the ground will be pretty muddy even after we get through. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. By the time the elephants trot around in that soft ground, it won't be fit to work on for the rest of the acts. You're working against time, too, aren't I you? I should say we are, less than three hours until matinee time. I hate to call it off. Well, I'll get my men on the job as fast as I can. I'll have the pumping apparatus over here and working within 15 minutes. Ah, uh, thank you, Chief. Thank Not you. at all, Mr. Randall. Glad to help. He sure is nice, isn't he? Yeah, very accommodating. Well, come on, Jerry. I've got a lot to do. Come on, Rags. Well, where are you going now, Mr. Randall? Well, I'll have to look up Murray and see if he can get some sand to spread around under the big top when they finish with the pumping. The water's even running way over this way. Yeah. He and look, there's a lot of it draining down toward the horse top. And that's a mess, Jerry, and a, it's a shame, too. We got a nice break in the weather, and then this had to happen. I don't think you'll have to call off the matinee, though. Yeah, we'll just have to wait and see what kind of a job the fire department does in pumping out that oh, water. Oh, Mr. Randall. You know, who is it? Oh, oh, it's you, Olson. Uh, have you seen Murray? Why, uh, saw him over by the horse top with Whitey. Yeah. Oh, hello, Jerry. Oh, hello, Olson. Uh, it's a fine puddle we've got under the big top. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, the fire department is going to pump out the surplus water. Yeah. Yeah, but the fire chief advised me to getting some sand to absorb whatever is left that the pumps can't draw up. Oh, sand, huh? Yeah. Say, uh, Olson, uh, yeah. run over and tell Murray to have his men spread it around before the matinee, will you? Okay, Mr. Randall. And, oh, uh, we'll have to get a lot of extra sawdust and get that down, too. Yes, yes, I know. It's a whale of a job. Yeah, but I, I don't want to postpone this matinee if I can help it. Olson, you run over and tell Murray that it's all up to him. <laughs> 